Father, we thank you for today. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you for how far you have brought us. It is by your grace. We bow before you and we say you are faithful. A lot of people that have started this year with us are not here today. Father, we do not take your mercies for granted. You are a faithful God. You are an awesome God. Let your word continue to build us. Let your word continue to open our eyes spiritually. Let your word continue to change us. Let your word continue to break every band of wickedness. And you alone get all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's celebrate the prophet of liberation before we take our seats. I want us to walk to three persons and tell them you have made it. Walk to three persons. take your seats in heavenly places hallelujah seven keys to your testimony for 2022 continues today and the last point will be shared with us today number seven be a giver hallelujah proverbs 11 24 to 25 Proverbs 11, I read from 24 to 25. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And then there is one who withhold more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Be a giver. Praise the Lord. The Bible says there is one that will withhold. When it's time for offerings, he will look for the lowest denomination that is in his bag or in his pocket or in his wallet to give. The Bible says, and then there is one that will look into his bag and will see the highest denomination. And because he knows he still has some more in the bank, in the house, he knows that that's will not end his life or his income or his career or will not put food on the table. He'll take that and give an offering. You know one thing I've observed? There's something that I've observed personally that Papa doesn't do and we don't do here. We don't believe in telling people lies to give. Can we celebrate Jesus? We don't believe in putting fear in people to give. Give 100,000. Sow a seed of 100,000. If not, in the next three days, I see calamity coming. I see accident coming. You don't see it here. You don't see different gimmicks. Bringing people to the altar of God. To put fear in people so that they can raise seed. We don't do it in divine hand of God. And that is why... You would expect that in this kind of arena where you know that if you give your offering of, even if it is one million, you know that what you gave it for will be used. Why do you withhold? But where you go and they tell you you have to pay 500,000 naira to see the general overseer, you seek you. You know a lot of times people do not appreciate what they get for free. Can I get a witness in this place? A lot of the times, people do not appreciate deliverance they get for free. They like the deliverance that they will tell them. We will go to your village. We will go and dig. We've seen things happen in this place. A wild declaration is going on here. The next time, people will come back to testify. Somebody called me from the village. The person is confessing. The person is doing this. They got it for free. But when they are coming to share testimony, even a seed, they will not drop on the altar. But that same person... Your family, you people need to contribute to 200,000. We need to go as a group of pastors. We need to go to your village and break everything. We need to dig something in your compound. But here you see, go to that place where you, where you hid it. Go to that place. Where did you put your money? Where did you put your glory? Oh, yeah, begin to dig it. Dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. The 
man of God will spend hours. But yet, when it is time for offering, you will look for the smallest denomination in your bag to give. This church has over 10,000 members. But we do respect, sir. If the act bearers are here, they can stand, please. Please, we do respect. How many of them do we see? Hallelujah. How many act bearers do we see? <laughs> How many? Can somebody just say the number for me? <laughs> Seven divinely chosen people. Who looked at Papa and said, Papa, don't buy diesel. Starting from next year. And that was, I think, starting from last year. They've been buying diesel. As we are seated here like this in church, we never run services on Nepal. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Please, you may sit down. Can we celebrate them? We never run services on Nepal. We run on diesel because we want uninterrupted service unto God. People looked at the need of the church. What about the covenant partners? Over 10,000 members. How many people are covenant partners? We have a category of even 1,000 naira. But yet, how many people are covenant partners? If you have been here for years and you are still not a covenant partner and you call yourself, I'm a daughter, I'm a son, I'm a daughter, I'm a son, and you are not yet a covenant partner, ask yourself why. You are not yet a covenant partner. In a place where you know nobody will steal your money. Because to the glory of God, the giant of Asia does not need it. And I certainly do not need it to the glory of God. Neither do the pastors need it to the glory of God. The Bible says there's one that will think he's wise. And he will continue to hold. He will hold, he will hold. And even when he has to give, he will hold it, he will hold it. That one thinks he's wise. But that one's all will scatter the most. There's something God told me. And when in the meeting, I shared it with the pastors. I said, God told me, when he gives you money, it is not for only you. When he gives you money, in as much as that money is in the bank, it is your name, it is your own, it is not for only you. Sometimes God blesses you for your neighbor. He blesses you because of your family, where you are coming from. He blesses you because of your community. You see people that are not politicians making roads, buying transformers, digging borehole for people to drink. Is it strange and is it surprising that you see the rich people getting richer? Are we surprised? The, the teaching is seven keys to your testimony. This is number one. And even if it does not sound sweet. You want, you are blessed. Take your money. Take your money. There are principles of life that will get you to that place of breakthrough. That will get you to that place of prosperity. That will get you to that place of glory. And if you believe the word of God, when it comes to giving, do not separate yourself from it. The Bible tells us of a widow that gave. She didn't give the most expensive. But she gave the best that she had. What about Mary? With a costly oil of perfume. She carried that oil, went to Jesus' feet and broke it on his feet. Carried, his, carried her hair and wiped it. What about in the days of Solomon? They want to build the church. Everybody will gather, will gather. They will bring, they will bring. Until the king will send to the people, do not give. When last did you see one part of the church and say, because some people have trust issues. You don't like to give your money. Yes, you don't like to give your money. Buy this with 50 liters. Come and drop it. Put it in the gem for me to see. Am I talking to us? This part of the church is dirty. Let me just clean it. Let me just put curtains. There are people here that don't have money. Come during the day, you see mothers sweeping the church. No money, but they are giving their labor. But yes, some of us, we come. If our favorite seat is not waiting for us, we get angry. <laughs> it is somebody that did the rug. The chair that you're sitting on is somebody that did it. A big church like this will have to pay for people to come and do flowers. Am I talking to us? If you want to increase, when it comes to giving, especially when God is the one speaking to you, do not withhold it. 
Your blessings can be withheld. If God has said, give this man this thing, and you're struggling. And most times, it must not be given to somebody that you even appreciate. But when God has spoken, he has what? When God has directed, he has directed. So if you are here, you have that spirit of being stingy. For your own good. For your own good. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. If you have, and you intentionally do not give when they call for offerings. Let me tell you, say, pastor, they chop money. Uh, the, the people there, they chop money. No matter where you find yourself, if they've called for offering, give. Anybody that is eating it is between them and the God that called them. It is not in your place to judge them. Because some people will come with seed. And this seed, Father, every sickness in my family, every disease in my family, every poverty in my family, Father, I give it. They will carry it and come and drop. Instead of you to use it for his house, you carry it and go and buy one car for yourself. It's not your business. But you must follow the principles of the Bible. And he said, give and ye shall be given. For the measure with which you give, the measure. So it's not about giving, it's how well do you give? How often do you give? How well, how often in relation and in principle to the word of God? Some people will drop empty envelope. They will say thanksgiving offering. Let's thank God for what he has done today. You come to the altar, you drop empty envelope. No matter how long you've been in church, the dangerous thing you can do for yourself and your lineage is to commonize God. It is to commonize God. Tell your neighbor, do not commonize God. If you can help, help to get your testimony, to retain your testimony. If you can help, help. Let me read for us Proverbs 3, 27. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it. When it is in your power to act, do not say to your neighbor, come back later, I will give it tomorrow. When you have it now, do not plus evil, harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. You want to keep your testimony. If God has said, give, give. Sometimes it is painful. Because he might be sending you to give to somebody that does not even appreciate you. Some people here have been discouraged from giving. Especially big men. A lot of them, you call them only when you need money. You call them only when you need favor. You call them only when you want them to come for your album launch. And even when they give... You will see, even greeting, thank you, you cannot say. I've said it to us here, nobody on earth owes you anything. The only people that owe you eh, are your parents. And when you get matured, you are supposed to pay back the debts. They are not supposed to take care of you all their lives. Papa was giving us an example here today. He said, a time will come when you, you will not be the one cleaning their mouths. A time will come where you will not be the one carrying them, mama. You see some way they bring them here. Their mothers, their fathers are sick. You see the children carrying them. Nobody owes you anything. Some of you are not blessed because even when people give to you, you question it. They may not hear it, but the Holy Spirit who spoke to them and out of their little, they gave you. You will go to that same person's back and you talk evil. And you say, my testimony is not coming. My breakthrough is not coming. My prosperity is not coming. I've been asking God for divine earth. Anybody that has fed you, do not talk evil about the person. <laughs> this message, some people are, but well, you know the Holy Spirit. When he gives a commandment, we do it. And even us that are doing it, where we know we are lacking, we will adjust. Eh? Hallelujah. Anybody that has fed you, when the person is not like was paying you a debt, the person was not owing you. If the person has given you as little as transport and you go back and you start to talk evil, I want to read Proverbs 25 to 22 for us very briefly. Verse 22. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For in so doing... 
you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. <laughs> Do we see the danger in that? And I round up with this. If God is speaking to you to do something, even if it's that in-law you don't like, because there'll be certainly in-laws that you don't like. <laughs> there'll be friends that you don't like. But like I said to us before, when God blesses you, he's not blessing you alone. That money, all of that money does not belong to you. He will not come down from heaven to come and give my sister money. But he will use a man or a woman that is obedient enough to release what he has said to release. And as a Christian, you don't help only people that you love. I know some people have stopped you. They have frustrated you. And in fact, there are a lot of givers that have stopped giving today because of human beings. That's why do not let other people's blessing be cut short because of your attitude. There are other people's blessings that have been cut off today because you see a man helping, helping, helping. He will help this one. He will help this one. The same people tomorrow will turn around to fight that same man. I know a man here came with nothing. A job was given to you. Salary was paid to you. You were never owed a month. You were married in this place. A car was given to you. What is the payment today? You don't need to curse that kind of person because the word of God will curse. He said, even to your enemies, if you see them thirsty, give them water to drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals. Because God knows how painful it is. Imagine somebody that doesn't like you. You call the person, come and eat. The person comes to your house. You put food on the table. For somebody that you know doesn't like you. That's why God ended that verse, that line with, and in so doing, I will reward you. Keep giving them. Do not change from being a giver from being a cheerful giver, from being helpful because of people. Because in withholding, because of the other person, or because of the people, or because of the community. You see politicians, because they didn't vote them in certain sectors, they, they leave their tenure and they don't do anything there. God will help us to do the right thing at the right time. And the last one, do not pledge. See, eh? the worst person you can owe is God. Can you owe God? The owner of the resources. The one whom in like this can snap the oxygen. Some people you want to show off, they call for seed. They call for pledge. You will come out. They will call for 50,000. They will call for 10,000. want to buy a microphone. We want to buy something. They will call for 5,000. But because even in church you want to show, you come out for 500,000, 200,000. And the moment you come out, they write your name. You don't come to church anymore. You are owing God. And so when blessings are scarce in coming, when testimonies are scarce in coming, go back and check if you are seated here. Sometimes I don't even bother. Right name, right name. <laughs> You're writing, oh, if you don't write, you not see. You don't need to write name. The moment you took that step of faith and you came out, God who has seen it has seen it. He's the one who records it. Because whether you give openly, whether you give secretly, and in fact, the giving that is even sweeter is the one you give secretly. <laughs> Am I talking to us here? When no man has seen you to say thank you, but the God who sees in secret, he says, I will reward you in the open. So if you are here and you are owing God, go and pay it to. And I'm not saying it must be here. Anywhere that is a house of God, that you have gone there and you've come out. Some people will come every time you call for seed, they will come out. When it is come and redeem it, you don't see them. You are owing God. I've shared with us seven very important keys to your testimony. As given by the Holy Spirit. And so if you want what has been decreed upon this house. To work for you. Every day is a testimony. Please go back and revisit these steps. But a giver, they say, never lacks. Look at a man, look at a woman that is doing very well. There's something synonymous with them. And you see the world operates on principles. So you see a Muslim will come and give. And he will be blessed. And you say, I mean that I'm a believer. Are you following the biblical principles of giving? 
Now they want to give offering. You are looking for God. <laughs> you are doing yourself. You are not doing anybody. So nobody is going to come here and be talking about giving, be talking about giving, be talking about giving, be talking about giving all the time. Nobody is going to do it. We will remind you. As teachers over you, it is a duty for us to remind you. But we cannot force you. The choice is yours. You want to increase. You want to be blessed. You want to prosper. You, 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 you want when they are calling your name, God will arise. Who is that? You cannot touch this one. Because if you touch this one, my house will suffer. I don't need to tell you the prayers the ark bearers are receiving on a daily basis from Papa. Because anyone that is helping to further your work, would you want even headache to disturb that person? <laughs> anyone that is helping you in life, would you want the person to complain of leg pain or their family to complain of leg pain? Let's rise to our feet. If you are not clapping, you're suspicious. And it's possible you are not clapping because you are meditating. Ah, this one, Mama has fired me today and I don't have transport. <laughs> Spiritual things are mysteries. You cannot explain it. There are steps that I have taken that have seen the results and the benefit immediately. But if you come here and you talk, I'm you with that. Uh, what do you expect before? So we don't bother sharing it. But when you see us, you see his glory. Wave your hands to heaven. I want you to say something to God. Father, from today, give me the grace to give. Because for some people, you need the grace of God. Though. Because even when God is speaking, you be, no, it's not God. Maybe it's just my mind. <laughs> Pray that prayer. Let God grant you the grace to be a dangerous giver. God will be speaking to you. Say, ah, I didn't hear, I didn't hear well. Let me, is it God speaking? Once has he spoken, it is your duty to obey him. And if you're here, you haven't made the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like to pray with you. Place your hand on your heart. Let me pray with you. The greatest example of a giver was Jesus. Who looked at you and I and said, ah, I will give my life for these ones. They are worth it. They are deserving of it. Even when we were not deserving. What greatest example do you need besides that? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and make me whole. I know that you died for me. Resurrected on the third day. Seated at the right hand of the Father. Interceding on my behalf. Wash me clean of all unrighteousness and make me whole. From today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Let's celebrate Jesus in this place.